Well, there are fears of retaliation attacks following a spate of gangland murders across Sydney. So what has led to the escalating tensions? In March, Taha Sabag was murdered outside a gym in Sefton by two assailants in front of his 12-year-old son. Police believe the shooting was targeted. In May, 24-year-old Marvin Areja was shot while sitting in his car outside an Elizabeth Hills home. He likely knew some members of the Comanchero bikie gang, but he had not been known to authorities. Then yesterday, Alex Moradin, linked to the Comancheros again, was gunned down in daylight in an undercover car park in Bondi Junction. Joining us to go through all of this now is the Daily Telegraph's very excellent crime editor, Mark Morey, is across the details as usual. So what's it all come down to, Mark? Uh, obviously, this person uh, is not a household name, but in the underworld, Alan Meridian was a major player in Sydney, probably one of the most powerful and feared men in the top five in the city. Uh, I've known about him for a couple of years, but mm. we've never really written about him because he, you know, for legal reasons and obviously for some personal reasons. So to see him gunned down was uh, a bit of a shock because I actually thought this guy was that big that no one would actually take him out. He was, uh, as I said, at the top of the tree of the Comanchero, quietly going about major, major business. So uh, to right. see him killed this way is pretty pretty big news in the underworld. Yeah, I, I called him Alex. His name's Alan, of course. Yeah. But uh, I mean, yeah. what, so what? And thanks for correcting me there too. Uh, is it drugs? Did, did he? Is it jealousy? What 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 do you put it down to? Well. <laughs> It's very, very hard. You know, last August, he was actually warned by police there was a contract out on his life. Now, with these players, it can be anything from internal. Uh, as I said, he's a major player. Now, he was also part of what's called the Commission, which is a cartel, which basically the Comancheros were trying to put a tax on anyone that imported any cocaine or any drugs into Sydney or Australia. Now, that would have upset a lot of people, including rival biking gangs, even overseas cartels. So the list of people who may have wanted to send a message to the commission by killing somebody in that one of that hierarchy, it could be that. It could be a personal matter. We, you, you just don't know yeah. with this. It, you know, these guys, they have... He, he spent a lot of time in jail. Uh, he could have made enemies in there. He uh, was stood over by another person who actually was killed recently, and that is uh, Brownie Ahmed. Now, you know, and the suggestions that he actually helped chip in to have Brownie Ahmed killed. Now, so is there some long-running bad blood there? So friends of Ahmed have decided to get even. We don't you know. A person like this has a long list of enemies. Yeah, and so which leads us to what happens next? I mean, retribution obviously comes. Uh, does police get there first or, you know, do the wolves kind of sort themselves out, Mark? Well, you know, again, if this is internal, there's unlikely to be retribution. But uh, police have, you know, they have suppression strategies. And they go all out. But, you know, you know, with you know, a number of these guys that have been killed recently, they've told them repeatedly. And they've even, you know, circling their houses, you know. And, um, yeah. But they can't be personal bodyguards, you know. They, you know, seriously, the, the police will be doing everything they can. They'll be knocking on all their enemies' doors saying, you know, we're out there watching. But they've got patience, you know. They'll, they'll just wait. They can wait six, 12 months before they might try to avenge his shooting. Mm. Or, you know, we might see somebody else now trying to kill somebody under the cover that it's revenge for this. That happens quite a bit too. The opportunistic, you know, thinking, well, we'll take out somebody and they'll, they'll blame it as a revenge attack for, for this last shooting. Yeah, and, and as you've, um, you've spelled out uh, quite significantly, Mark, you, this is the 17th murder in the, the gangland war since 2020. I mean, is, is it all related? Is this the worst it's been? How would you describe it? Well, it's, it, it appears to be, you know, it, it is, it's pretty bad. But this has been going on for decades. I remember in the 80s, there were seven or eight guys gone in nine months. <laughs> um, so, but what it's now, I think we see so much of it on social media. The other thing is not many murders were captured on CCTV like they used to be. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing that now. So it, it appears like there's more. And the other thing is these are very public shootings now. It's because the guys are so well protected that their enemies have to take them out in public because that's the only opportunity they yeah. get because they, they, they build little fortresses. And, and the eastern suburbs is rare, isn't it, Mark? It is um, because most of the the crime networks are emanating from southwest Sydney, but uh, quite a lot of these bikies, as they get more and more wealthier, 
like any aspirational people, they start moving into the more affluent suburbs. So, yeah. you know, it, mm. we're not, you're not insulated just because you're in the uh, eastern sure. suburbs. Just to find. Being knocked. 